ladies and gentlemen, Mother Jeffrey, who is here tonight with her husband, Sanford Allen, and daughters, Zia, Mira, and Sakina Jaffrey. Congratulations to them all. I'd now like to invite James Ivory, the filmmaker whose long collaboration with Ismail Merchant and screenwriter Ruth Pawar Jabwala won Merchant Ivory six Oscars for films like Room with a View and Howard's End, and who has known Mother for more than half a century. Please come on up, Mr. Ivory. Well, I'm not prepared at all to say anything, and everyone else has said such wonderful things. Uh, I wish I knew some of the people that I heard speaking tonight. Unfortunately, I don't. Maybe I will someday. Um, I've known Madur since, uh, well, since I moved to New York. And it's through Madur that I met Ismail. And uh, Madur has been so much involved in so many of my films for so long. So it gives me a great pleasure to have handed her this. Well, the word that is sticking in my head today is stowmore. Stowmore. And it's this word with its viscous associations that just doesn't go away. And I'm thinking of this bright young girl who could answer questions and spell the word and the other bright young people who could say what city this was in or that was in. And I said to myself, thank God there are two parts to the brain. I have the other part. And also, to put the balance a little bit straight, I am from North India. So, so here we are, a perfectly balanced Indian-American community with the left side of the brain, a right side of the brain, with the arts and the sciences all within our grasp. Now, when I left India for the first time, I went to study drama in England because there were no drama schools in India at that time. You might not remember such a time, but there was such a time and I belonged to it. So the government of India had given me a scholarship to study drama, but could not provide me with a school. So at that time, you weren't even allowed to take money out of the country, rupees. So they allowed me to take a little bit of money out, convert it into pounds, and go to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, where I went like a well-bred Indian girl from a convent speaking my accent, which was an Indian accent. So it took two years for the Royal Academy to teach me through sentences like, how now brown cow, <laughs> I ate a cake today, and not say, I ate a cake today. <laughs> so with this new language and this new uh, spirit, I used to wear glasses. I threw my glasses into the Atlantic Ocean dramatically as I sailed to America. And then I came here without my glasses, saying, how now, brown cow? And I looked like an Indian, and I looked for work. I wanted to be Marlon Brando. <laughs> I could not get any work. They said, why do you speak like that? You don't speak like an Indian. So eventually, I had to give up my I baked a cake today accent and learn to be just an Indian with an ordinary Indian accent. And then I got a few more parts, mostly as terrorist mothers. <laughs> um. <laughs> and that's how I started my career. And it was not an easy one, and I was hoping that it would get easier as time went on but it did not get any easier. And so 
people say, well, how did you get into cooking? Well, I don't know. Uh, I feel I was hijacked into it because I started writing articles. I could write. And I was writing articles on anything I knew anything about, the Ajanta Caves, uh, uh, Kunarak, uh, the paintings of, uh, uh, in, in the sort of Ajanta Caves. Whatever came to my head, I would propose to a magazine and they would say, okay, go and write it. And it was my way, really, of discovering my own country by getting articles on subjects I knew absolutely nothing about. I would go to India, Kathakali dancing. I wanted to go to the original, the origins, find out the origins of Kathakali dancing. I wanted to go to the village where Kathakali started. And it was an excuse. I sold it. I don't know how. I used my acting technique to sell the article to the Smithsonian or the New York Times, uh, whoever it was. And then it, it was an excuse for me to go to my own country and learn more about it and write for it, about it for the American papers and magazines. So I, this way I started this kind of career. And I happened to write one article about Indian food. Somebody said, can you write about what you ate as a child in India? I said, sure, I can write about that. But that somehow sent me off spinning into another world of cookery. People said, can you do a cookbook? I said, well, okay, maybe I can. And so I started a whole other career for which I had not planned at all. And here I am with this lovely dual career, which I just love. And I'd like to say that India Abroad is younger than I am. I started in this country before India Abroad started, but I look upon it as a younger sibling. We grew up together. I see some of its photographers. I've known them since they were butchas. They were kids. They've been photographing me since then. I say hello. I give them a kiss. And, you know, there we go from there. But they've known me. I've known them. Some of the reporters who write for India Abroad have known me for a long time. So we have a wonderful relationship together. And they have been very kind to recognize my little, little efforts over time. And I would like to take this opportunity to do several things. I would like to thank my wonderful family that is, they're all sitting at that table over there. Uh, my, my three daughters, Zia, uh, Mira, and Sakina, who would say, why is there only soup in the fridge? And I'd say, I'm on the soup chapter. That's why there's only soup in the fridge. And, and my poor husband, who was made to eat, uh, this, I would test something three times and he would be sick of it, but he would very kindly eat it. So I would like to thank him. I would like to thank my grandchildren, who have some of whom are following my footsteps and love to cook. I have a grandson, Roby, who uh, loves, absolutely loves to cook. So they've all been part of this experiment of my life. And I'd like to thank them very much. I'd like to thank India Abroad for holding my hand every step of the way, recognizing me as, as I took my little steps early on in the game. Thank you, India Abroad, very, very much for this honor. Thank you.